Just when you thought we were done talking about monthly paying dividend ETFs, everyone's favorite financial YouTuber who always wears a sweater bought BST BlackRock Science Technology. And now you're wondering, hmm, is this the right investment for me? Can anything be better than QILD? Well, you're in luck, because in today's video, I'm gonna be covering how this fund is able to pay out an amazing dividend yield of over 7%, but still produce great returns over the years. Just make sure you hit that like button to help out a small time YouTuber, say no to censorship, and subscribe to the channel. So despite its name, BlackRock Science and Technology is not the name of a prestigious boarding school. We know that BlackRock might control the world with its over $9 trillion in assets under management, but they are not quite indoctrinating your children just yet. What makes BST so much different than other ETFs is that they are a closed-ended fund. This means that when BST IPO'd in October of 2014, they raised money and issued millions of shares. Generally, no new shares are ever issued again, and no new money will pour into the fund. Hence the name closed. It's kind of like Bitcoin in the fact that the shares outstanding are a finite amount. If an investor wants to sell their shares, they would have to find a buyer just like with a normal stock. This is a lot different than how most ETFs operate. They usually issue new shares and raise money when an investor just simply buys into the pool. And the ETF provider would just buy back the shares when an investor wants to sell. BlackRock Science Technology did offer a writer's offering, which allowed them to raise more capital by letting current shareholders buy more shares at a discount this past year. Now you might already see where this is going because now there is two different prices you need to be worried about rather than just one. There is the NAV, the net asset value of the fund, which is typically just the total cash and the value of the securities a fund holds minus liabilities. And then you take that number and divide it by the number of shares outstanding. That will give you what an ETF typically trades for. However, because there is a finite amount of shares with BST and you need to be swapping with someone else to buy and sell, the closed end fund can trade at a premium or at a discount than the actual NAV. BST trades independent, but close to in relation to its NAV. Trading at a premium would mean the share price is actually higher than the intrinsic value, while at a discount would be the opposite. Possible reasons for this might be if a fund is heavily invested in a particular sector that is either favorable or not favorable. For example, the oil sector when C19 first started. Another possible reason is if they are led by a manager with a strong reputation. Let's say that Kathy Wood ran the portfolio, people might be willing to pay a premium to have her touching your money. But these days, people are probably running if they found out that Kathy is handling their money. Okay, so now you understand how BST is set up. Let's get into the actual characteristics of this ETF. So BST will invest 80% of its total assets in stocks at any given point. Going back to the ETF's name, they are focused on science and technology companies that could have rapid and sustainable growth potential, advancement and development of science and tech, and the potential to generate income from advantageous dividend yields. So that's why they have heavy exposure to technology. So this isn't gonna be the fund you wanna invest in if you wanted to buy McDonald's. Like other income ETFs, BST also does a strategy of writing covered call options on a portion of their portfolio. Covered calls are great because an investor can generate money when a stock trades sideways, sort of like making your own dividends. But the downside is that this limits any upside a stock might have because you're agreeing to hand over shares at a certain price called the strike price if it is met on a predetermined date. BlackRock doesn't do covered calls on its entire portfolio, unlike other income ETFs. Currently, they are only doing covered calls on about one third of their portfolio. This could leave the door open to a lot of potential gains if the stock market did do well over the years. You wouldn't get that with many other income ETFs because you would be giving away that upside potential. Based on their latest yearly report, the fund typically does options 5% out of the money with an average time until expiration of 49 days. Another characteristic of BlackRock is that it does not discriminate against market cap size. About two thirds of its portfolio is over $10 billion, but the rest is actually under that. The average market cap is about $580 billion, so they are still investing in some huge companies. 
And we can actually see exactly what their holdings are in their company website document section. We see a lot of familiar companies, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, AMD, MasterCard, but they are heavily invested in semiconductors, which if you know me, I love this sector. And they are also heavily invested in software and IT services. Currently their portfolio has 123 different investments. So software services and semiconductors, they make up almost 70% of their holdings. That does not worry me at all because I think these are great sectors to be involved in in the future. I mean, just look at the world right now. Now there's a huge semiconductor shortage. That means we as a world cannot keep up with these products because the demand is just so large. Their three largest individual positions are Apple and Microsoft at about 4% each. And then there's also Marvel Technology at a little over 3%. Marvel Technology is a company that specializes specializes in providing the machinery that Spider-Man and his friends explode in all of the various Marvel movies. Okay, just kidding, they actually make semiconductors. I'm sure they're seen in some Marvel movies too. BlackRock also provides info on the warrants the fund has access to, as well as a detailed list of all the options written, which is pretty neat to examine. Overall, about 75% of its investments are based in the US. Generally, the higher this number is, the better I feel about the safety of what I'm putting my money towards. Since the fund is actively managed and not just passive, I would suggest reading up on the portfolio managers to make sure you are comfortable with them. They do, after all, charge a very high expense ratio of 1.09%. That means you would be giving up $109 every year for every $10,000 invested, regardless of how the fund performs. That is ridiculously high considering that QILD is nearly half that at just 60 basis points, and a passive S&P 500 ETF F like VU is super cheap at just 4 basis points. So if we we're going to be paying such high fees, this fund better have had some amazing performance over the years. And the answer to that is yes, they have actually beat the market since their inception over seven years ago. BST has returned 250% or about 19% each year annualized compared to the S&P 500's 153% or about 14% each year. It should be noted that tech in this past decade has done very well. So the chances of that being replicated again, I'm not so sure about that. It should also be noted that the options premiums are heavily swayed by volatility. So if a stock is trading sideways, those premiums won't be as high and those dividend payments BST has been giving, it might possibly be lower. I just wanted to point this out because I know there's always going to be people in the comments that will definitely let me hear about it if I didn't mention it. In fact, in 2021, BST was actually in the red, while the NASDAQ was certainly up. Now there's just one last thing to discuss, and that's what everyone and their grandmas wants to know about, and that is dividends and taxes. So we can see that BST has done a really great job of paying out monthly dividends since their inception seven years ago. What's even better is that these amounts have grown over the years, and they also do seem to give those extra juicy dividends in December. This is normally the part where I say BST's dividends are actually a return of capital or tax that short-term gains rates, but this is actually where BST really sets itself apart from the others. BST offers a 100% long-term capital gains rate on its distributions. Let me repeat that one more time. BST's dividends are taxed at long-term capital gains rates. That's right, the most preferential tax treatment is given for their over 7% yield. Just like Joseph, I really did try to research how this could be possible. I know their other ETF that I covered, Degrow, is also the same way. It's also taxed as long-term capital gains, but I'm not exactly sure how they're able to do this. I'm actually gonna issue a challenge to my subscribers. If you can explain how BST is able to give 100% long-term capital gains on its distributions despite doing options trading, and you let me know in the comments and provide a source, I will pin it in the comments below. Overall guys, BST is a completely different beast than any of the other ETFs I've ever covered, and just how it's structured as a closed-end fund, what an invest in, that it's actively managed, and how the taxes are paid. This sounds like a great investment for those who want exposure to tech, but also want to get paid those big dividends every single month. Because let's face it, if you're investing in those top-notch tech companies, 
you'd be lucky to find one that pays higher than a 1% dividend yield. This video took a lot of time for me to research and edit. Please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel because I make videos like this all the time. Leave a comment too as it also helps out for the algorithm. There is a similar ETF called BSTZ, which I have a feeling you might want me to make a video about. As always, my videos are found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. And I will buy, stash, and collect cash you later.